two-dimensional mandibular superimposition. This video provides the orthodontist with the information necessary to reliably and accurately superimpose longitudinal cephalograms on natural mandibular reference structures. By the end of this short presentation, it should be clear why we superimpose on internal structures, how the superimpositions will be used, and, most important, how they should be performed. Due to the modeling that occurs, mandibular growth and treatment effects cannot be evaluated by superimposing on the mandibular outline. This is why superimpositions on the lower border cannot be relied upon. Bone is either being added or it's being removed. Except for the periosteal contour of the chin just below Pagonion, the entire outline changes over time. During growth and treatment, the teeth move within the mandible and along with the mandible while it is being displaced. To determine the displacement of the mandible, the orthodontist must subtract the tooth movements that occur within the mandible, which are derived from the mandibular superimposition, from the total changes that occur, which are derived from the cranial base superimposition. In order to accurately superimpose the mandible, you need to be able to rely upon structures that do not change over time. There are both primary and secondary stable structures that are superimposed upon. The primary structures are the most important and should be used whenever they can be visualized. Secondary structures are used to support the primary structures or when the primary structures cannot be clearly seen. Perhaps the most reliable primary structure is the contour of the chin just below Pagonion. It can always be seen the inner contour of the cortical plate at the lower border of the symphysis, located at the most inferior aspect of the trabecular bone, is another primary structure that is stable. Posteriorly, the mandible is superimposed on the contours of the alveolar canals, which are stable throughout growth. Remember, as many as four contours representing the right and left canals may be visible. Try to use the two most anterior or the two most posterior contours. The key is to use the same contours for both tracings. Before root development begins, the lower contour of a mineralized tooth germ provides a secondary structure that can be superimposed upon. The pretreatment and post-treatment tracings of the mandible are superimposed in the following manner. Horizontally or sagittally, the tracings are first oriented by the anterior contour of the chin. Then they are oriented vertically on the inner contour of the cortical plate. Remember, it is the lowest aspect of the contour that should be used. Also, any distinct trabecular structures in the symphysis can be superimposed upon. Posteriorly, the tracings are superimposed on the mandibular canal and a molar germ. To verify that the superimposition is correct, always check the anterior border of the ramus. It usually moves posteriorly, indicating resorption of bone. It should never move anteriorly with growth.